Hi, welcome to my video on extra problem number one. Find the equation of the hyperbola. So we're going to find the equation of the hyperbola in transformational form. And notice we have the asymptotes are y plus 2 equals plus or minus 3 over 4 x minus 4. And we have the axis of intercept, which is horizontal, and the vertical, sorry, the horizontal stretch, I said vertical. Now, why would I say that? Horizontal stretch is 4. So, let's look at the point that we have. The point is the opposite of the negative 4, which is 4. The opposite of, which, of the plus 2, which is a minus 2. And so that's the point that we, the asymptote passes through. So that's really, I call it the center of the hyperbola is 4, negative 2. So that means, and notice we have the axis of intercept is horizontal. So that means we have an x. Again, that's a minus 4, which is the opposite of the plus 4 squared. And we have a y plus 2 squared. Because it's horizontal, the x is first and the y is second, and is equal to 1. So the slope is, the slope is 3 quarters. So the slope is the b over the a. So that means the b over the a is 3 over 4. So the horizontal stretch is the a. So the horizontal stretch is 4, so everything is okay. So that means that a is 4 and b is 3, so a is 4, so a squared is 16, and b squared is 9. So that's the equation in the transformational form. Given the equation of the asymptotes, etc., etc., and the axis of uh, intercept, or the transverse axis is horizontal. Now let's try another one. This time we have the asymptotes broken up into two equations. So what notice uh, I should say notice the asymptotes intersect so if we take the two equations this is equation one and this is equation two and we let a half x equal negative a half x if we solve these two equations like solving a system of equations we'll find it where they intersect so a half x add on a half x equals four Half a half is 1, so x equals 4. So if x is 4, that means y equals a half x. x is 4, so we put 4 in, so y is 2. So the point that the two asymptotes meet is 4, comma 2. x is 4, y is 2. So that's the center of the hyperbola. So we have the axis of intercept is vertical and the horizontal stretch is uh, 1. So that means if the, if the axis of intercept is vertical, that means the y is first. So that means we have a y minus 2 all squared minus an x minus 4 all squared. Notice this is the point of intersection or the center of the hyperbola or where the two asymptotes meet is 4 comma 2 we change the signs now we have to go and find the a and the b so the slope notice the slope is positive a half negative a half so the slope is a half because one is positive and one is negative that means the slope is the b over the a so the b over the a is 1 over 2 and the vertical stretch is 1 so the vertical stretch is 1 so everything is okay because b is the vertical stretch 1 so that means b is 1 and a is 2 so b is 1 so b is with so this is a 1 squared and this is a 2 squared so the equation is y minus 2 squared over understood to be over 1 minus x minus 4 squared over 4 equals 1.
And again, I can put the one there, but I don't have to. So this is the equation of the hyperbola in transformational form, giving this info. Now let's do another one. Or another one, another two. We have two on this page. This time, I've given you the graph of the hyperbola. So, when we give you the graph, we notice, I notice right away that I have the vertices. I have two vertices. We can call it vertice one and vertice two. The one vertice is uh, x is three, y is zero. The other vertice x is negative three and y is zero. And notice that this, this is a horizontal axis. So it's because the x is, the center is zero, zero right here. So the center of the point is zero, zero. Notice zero, zero is where the two asymptotes meet. And because it's horizontal, we have an x squared and we have a y squared. We have no brackets here because the center is zero, zero equals one. And now we'll go and get what the a and the b is. Notice the horizontal stretch is um, Notice the horizontal stretch is 2 and the rise is, sorry, the horizontal stretch is 3 and the vertical stretch is 2. So the slope of the asymptote, let's go from here to here, we will rise 2 and run 3. So it's 2 over 3. So B over A is 2 over 3. Oh, I didn't need that bracket. And so A is 3, B is 2, and notice A is 3, which makes sense. From the center, we go 3 right and 3 left, so the 3 is in line. This is okay. So A is 3, so A squared is 9, B is 2, so B squared is 4. So there's the equation in the transformational form. Center is 0, 0. It has a, a horse that has a horizontal axis because the x is positive and y is negative. So this is the equation that represents this graph. Now we have a sort of a little different equation here, or a different equation, different question. State two equations of the hyperbola in transformational form. If the asymptotes are y equals plus or minus 5 over 6x and the axis of intercept is vertical. Two equations. Well, what we mean is that, well, let's explain. Well, we have these asymptotes, so let's go plus or minus 5 over 6x. So when I say we have two equations, let's, or more, notice that the slope is 5 over 6. Notice that the slope is the b over the a. So that means the b over a is 5 over 6. But what happens, we, we only know that we have the axis of intercept is vertical, but we don't know what the stretch is. We don't know what the horizontal or the vertical stretch is. So that means the b over the a is 5 over 6, but also the b over a, if you double it, could be 10 over 12. The B over the A, if you triple it, could be 15 over 18. It's the same slope, but we don't know if the, if the vertical stretch is 5 or the vertical stretch is 10 or the vertical stretch is 15. We could have many, many slopes that reduce to 5 over 6. So we could have one equation, and notice that the asymptote also is a Y minus 0 plus or minus 5 over 6 and x minus 0, so the center of this one is 0, 0. And because it has a vertical, so that means we got a y squared minus an x squared equals 1. The center is 0, 0 because of the, this point slope form right here. Now, we could have a horizontal, we could say in this question, that A is 6 and B is 5. 
So the B is 5, so we have a 25. The A is 6, which is 36. Or we could have that A is 12 and B is 10. So we still have y squared minus x squared equals 1. But the y squared, the b is with the y, so 10 squared is 100. And a squared, 12 squared is 144. So this is two equations. Or we could have more, many more equations. But these are two where I just kept the slope as 5 over 6. And or I get the slope as 10 over 12. We could do many more equations, but these are just two of the ones that we that I worked out. So there's two possibles because we do not again repeat. We know that it's vertical. We know that the y is positive and the x is negative, but we do not know what the horizontal and the vertical stretches are. It could it could be many many infinite number of equations to represent this question, but these are just two of them. And that brings us to the end. And if you like my video, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. Visit my math website, www.mathfullyexplained.com to find more information about me, my videos, and the content that's on my YouTube channel called Math Fully Explained. Thank you for viewing my video. Hope the video was of some help to you. Bye-bye.